There you go. I want to start this by saying thank you, Father, in Jesus' name for this day. I thank you for each and everybody on the platform, family and friends. But I, I thank you for you, most of all, the awareness of you and you in us. So as we ascend in or go in through the blood of Jesus and through the Son, I want us to breathe in literally the presence of Father's love, the presence of his goodness, um, the presence of his joy, his glory. Just breathe it in and blow out everything that entangles us to the world whether it's our bills, our marriage, our children. And I mean, I want to do this like two or three times, really, because we're going to go into the goodness of Father. So on the count of three, as I breathe you in, and I blow out everything that the world has entangled, this occupied space in my mind, and I breathe you in, Lord, your goodness, your grace, and as I breathe you in and blow out every entanglement from the world, I enter in to see what you have for me tonight through the blood of Jesus, the waterfall of his blood, but also the glory in the water from his side. And as I go in tonight, we'll go through the blood of Jesus. I want us to go into the goodness of Father's heart through the gates of our heart. And on the count of three, as we take a breath in and receive him and his goodness and the sun blow out and go in. One, two, three. And I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Um, immediately, I saw a, a, an electric blue cross. It's kind of, um, you guys familiar with the sound that a neon light sounds like, you know, when it's humming along, it sort of has that hum. Yes. That's what I hear. I actually can confirm that, Jill. I, I'm, I'm seeing the faint in the distance of that, it's like a light electric blue, almost like a, not necessarily so light, but a sea blue, if that makes any sense to you. But it's off in the distance, but I can hear the humming. But as I entered in, I entered in through the warmth. It was like a, a liquid, thick warmth. So are you, are you, did you enter into that cross? Yeah, and then through it, I, I felt the impression through this warmth like almost into an area of a heart or, or through a bell or it's, it's, I can see the cross where I'm standing at as I went through it. It's off to the right, but I'm in a, a little area that is thick. It, it almost makes me feel like the kabod presence of the Lord. As, uh, do you guys need um, the rest of the group? Would you, do you need to be, would you like to be led into that place or have you, has everybody stepped into where Mandy, where Mandy described? I think it's a different, um, a different perspective of the same thing. Um, okay. It, what, what I, I immediately stepped into the joy and, and then I saw from the driver's seat um it was a blue convertible and a white head bandana thing you know to hold your hair down or whatever you're still it's still blowing around the edges but um uh, but a blue convertible going down the road and i heard joy ride and um you know how, or at least when I was a kid, sometimes when my dad was goofing off, he would swerve just for fun. And that's <laughs> kind of, we were, that's kind of what we we're doing in this blue convertible. We we're just having fun. 
I, and I heard, I heard joy ride. I love that. But it just felt so, it just felt, it felt peaceful too. Um, it wasn't like dangerous or anything or like speeding per se. It was just joy. I saw something completely different. I saw complete blackness with an upside down water funnel like you would see when you're draining water out of the tub as it goes down. I saw it big at the bottom going up and it was pure gold. It was gold and black as it spun. And it, it, in seconds, I would be inside looking up like I was going to be sucked into this thing. And then and in, in the same second, I was on the outside looking at it. And that's just where I've been. I, I don't even know what it means. Maybe it's the end of all this. I don't know where we're going to end up. Sometimes he brings me in at the end, at the beginning, because it's nothing like what you guys are talking about, what I saw. Um, wow. So <laughs> I'm, I'm in the cosmos, and I see amongst all the stars like this huge butterfly it has pictures on it and I'm trying to figure out what it is and it morphs into this liquid glass that is moving in and out and as I keep looking it is a unicorn moving within itself and outside itself and around itself whoa <laughs> I like that too. They're all pretty wild. When when I stepped in, I saw like a dark burgundy red rise up from the right hand side, like really deep, deep blood red, but but deeper than than blood. It's like just like a mass of blood, so almost like in a heart, and I could hear a heartbeat, like do 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 do. But then everything that everybody has said, I can relate to as well, even though I didn't see it. It's like, as they were describing it, I got a really clear picture of it. Especially the car that Mary was saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I really feel like, and I'm probably speaking more for me, when I was doing the breathing part and I was releasing the entanglements of the world, it was really things that happened to me this week. I could see those things leaving my spirit. Um, and I feel like what I got, what Jesus gave me in exchange was that, that joy. And I kind of think that's, what these things represent in each of us is that as we breathe out the entanglements of the world, this is what we got in, in place of, or it, it, in, yeah, in place of to, to in trade, in trade. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good. Yes. So I'm going to ask a question y'all. Can y'all see us around each other? Yes. But because now I feel like as we've untangled from the world and we've received our blessing, do we all should grab hands because we're in the Father's heart with different facets of it for each one of us, that we should grab hands and come together to enter in into the goodness of what he has for us as one man. Let's do it. Uh, yeah. yeah, I agree with that. I'm in agreement. Sounds good. Okay. So I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, for untangling us from the world and the issues that so snared us. I thank you for the blessings that you picked out and chosen and handpicked for each one of us. So as we come together and grip hands one to another, Father, we step in into the goodness of what you have for us <laughs> on one, two, three, step in.
I am so elevated. I close my eyes. I'm like just way, way up there. I'm so elevated. I can agree when we stepped in together, it was almost immediate lift up. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel it in my physical body. I saw us oh. go down and then <laughs> catapult up as if we went down, we jumped down in, onto a trampoline and then went whoosh, like shot up like <laughs> rocket, like all of us at the same time. So I agree with that too. <laughs> I'm just hearing, I was trying to think how to describe it and I just heard the word caught up. You know, you hear you'll be caught up, I'm, I'm caught up. I love it, it's so nice up here. <laughs> I heard, I, I saw what I thought was, it was a point in the middle, like in, the, in a space type view. And there was the point in the middle with the concentric circles moving out from it as, um, because when we stepped in immediately, I saw the first circle form and it kind of shot out quickly and the other ones are coming out from this middle. And then I heard the word singularity. I know that has to do with the black hole, but I don't know very much about it. So I probably should look that up. Let me look that up. This whole time I felt like I've been, I, I, I didn't see, I just sensed I was going through layers and continuing to ascend up, 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 up. And now I feel like I'm starting to like slow down and level off. I don't know if anyone else is having that experience, but um, seems like we went through multiple layers. What do, you, what do you think those layers were? Do you have any, any sense? Um, are they layers of our sen they I'm not I'm not sure because I sensed um, out in the cosmos I sensed like almost time um, oh. like um, um, like different atmospheres like yeah. there's an atmospheric shift that I, I knew I was going through that would be like a line if I could see it but I couldn't see anything I could just sense and it was like up, 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 up. And it was like another one, another one, another one. And now I feel like I'm floating and leveling off. And I saw all blackness, but a light being shown on me. So I don't know what that is. Um, like a bright light, like a spotlight, yeah. <laughs> but all blackness. <laughs> so, I, and again, when I went in, it was this black, like vortex that was gold. It was spinning. Um, I, I sensed it was spinning because the gold was, um, changing as if there was a rotation, but I couldn't see the rotation. And it was, um, like I said, it was big at the bottom and it was going off smaller and smaller. As it, and, and it, now I feel like I've been in that and that's almost what's been happening. It's like, I don't know, time, space content or something. I don't know. And then she just said black hole. And I was like, I wonder if that's what it feels like. Cause when we jumped in or I say jump, because I felt like we all immediately as she was counting us in holding hands, we jumped down and I thought we sprung back up, which is what I saw in my visual. But I asked the Lord, did we come through the other side and it's up, not down. 
So I don't know. We'll figure out. Maybe Mary's got the key with what she's got that word. Yeah. More will be revealed. It always is, huh? <laughs> I can agree that as we were going up, my head got placed back in the chair almost like I couldn't move it, like at a tremendous speed, but a weight. And I feel floaty almost as leveling off. But I see this circling circle around. So I what what I'm seeing is a dark hole, but with light around it. And the light's pulsating in it and out it. And we're rolling in it and we're coming out and we're just rolling. And when Mary said that, and then you described that as I'm seeing what I'm seeing in it, I almost feel like we're there at the black hole. Yeah. And what do black holes do? Do they take you in? Black holes, you know, I, I'm, I, I think that, well, okay, I've heard different, different descriptions of black holes. Some say they birth things, so that things spin out. Others say they spin in. So I'm wondering if it's more of like a torus. The black holes are really like a torus thing where they do both. They go in and come out. Yeah, it was like we came in and came out the other side and I saw Taurus in my mind, but it doesn't oh. make sense to me because when we jumped in, it was like we were catapulted right back up and out. But then immediately at the same time, I said, did we shoot through the other side? And then I saw that Taurus and I'm like, does that go in and out? Does that go up and down? Right. <laughs> All that was going on at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I just heard um, space time continuum and I tried to search it. So that reminds me of um, like a quantum. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I just sense. Well, what it, what my, my phone, I usually, I let God control where things go on my phone. Okay. And so it's, it's still led, you know, the answer sometimes opens more questions. Um, but I think it has something to do with an acceleration in human intelligence. And I know that kind of sounds crazy from where we're at, but that's where my phone took me. Wow. Um, technical, te technological singularity has to do with an acceleration of human intelligence. And that's where my phone took me. And it can, of course, it can be good or bad. Yeah, yeah. And so, I, you know, I, I felt a little uncomfortable with the way it was presented, but I, I felt like the Lord said that in itself is not good or bad. It's where what we do with it yes. that makes it bad. Yeah. And so um, when I was on a walk today, I was talking to my husband and he goes, did you just have a bunch of coffee? Because you're talking incredibly fast today. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, well, <laughs> I was like babe it's all about acceleration he's like what and I'm like we're being accelerated and he was like okay he thinks I'm weird I say weird stuff like that but that's what I said today on my walk he's like well, I don't know why you're talking so fast Now, I have a question, Mary, does that say uh, human intelligence or does it just say intelligence? It said human intelligence, but the way it was presented, there's been papers written on it, apparently. I'll mm -hmm. read you some of what it says. It says um, a technical, a technical logical, I'm not probably saying that right, but singularity or the simple or simple the singularity is a hypothetical point in time in which technological growth becomes um, 
uncontrollable, and let me go on down to the next line. Um, according to the most popular version of the singularity hypothesis called intelligence explosion, an upgrade, an upgradable intelligent agent will eventually enter a runway reaction of self-improvement cycles and new and more intelligent generation appearing more and more rapidly, causing an explosion in the intelligence and resulting in a powerful superintelligence. See, I'd never heard of that as far as relating to a singularity. I always thought it was a black hole, but that kind of goes with what Jill was saying to me, that a black hole is not something that things go into and they're lost forever, but it's more like a, a supersized Taurus because they've got, they're going somewhere. Uh, they disappear according, and, and all of that is even a black hole is a hypothesis. Yeah. Have not, they've not been able to find one. They, all those things that are presented to us, we think they're facts, but they're not. They're, they're just hypothesis of what they believe is happening through, you know, they have their means of, of, figuring those things but nonetheless they have my understanding from what i heard recently is they have never seen or found a black hole they just believe they exist yeah and, and uh, something i learned about science a few years back is that um it, it's a belief and then the scientists find ways to get to that conclusion. Like they, they start out instead of having a conclusion and following it and seeing what, what they end up with, they, they have a belief that something is true. And so then they follow it scientifically. Right. To, to prove it out, yeah. Right. That's, that's what a hypothesis is. It's hypothesis, all thank you, yeah. Barbara. Mm -hmm. So all the things that they have, um, so I just, um, if it's okay, I just ask the Lord to reveal the truth of what, um, of what he's showing us about the things that all of us have seen um, since we've gotten to this point. Yeah. So I thank you, Lord, that, um, that you love us so much and you brought us up here to be with you. We, we desire that and we want to be with you. And Lord, we're seeking the truth. And we're just asking that you reveal the truth to us that you want us to know right now. Holy Spirit reveals the truth. And we won't know the truth if Holy Spirit doesn't reveal it to us. And we just open ourselves right now to the truth that you want to reveal to us tonight. In Jesus' name. Mary, when I looked up singularity under physics and mathematics, it says a point at which a function takes in an infinite value, especially in space time, when matter is infinitely dense as at the center of a black hole. And that's what um, came up for me under singularity when you look at physics slash mathematics. And it reminds me of when we first went in and um, Mandy said that it was very dense, almost like the Kabod glory. Oh yeah. Where she was, we've said space time for me, I saw the blackness with the gold and the spiral going in, and we've all explained possible like black hole type center things. So I, I think it's right on. I think it's just more of um, maybe he's helping us understand where we are, but maybe we're going to know what it does or get a get an um, accelerated understanding of what um, that space does and that, you know, a point at which a function takes an infinite value especially in space time when matter is infinitely dense as at the center of a black hole hmm. anyway. could you post that on the chat i did yes yeah. okay thank you so question what is everybody seeing right now where we're at well i i i I've been seeing, you know, the, that electric blue cross has turned into like a, an electric blue spiral that turns into a Taurus. So 
my question and the reason I asked that is, do y'all, if, if we're all on the same page, seeing the same thing, this cyclone like circled black hole thing, should we not go in it? Do you trust the father to go in it? I don't know. I I think, what does everybody else think? I think it's, yeah, let's go in. Let then, Yeah, if everybody agrees. I definitely trust the father. Um, I don't know. It, it, for me, what I was saying is I wasn't. I wasn't sure it was time yet to go in. But what does everybody else yeah. feel on that? I sensed I was already in it, going through those layers. Okay. Yeah. And when I hit yeah. that, it was all black. Yet a spotlight was on me, and I hit zero gravity. It was like all of a sudden I just was floating. Wow. Up, 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 up. And then I just leveled off, started to slow down. And I saw myself from like third person with a spotlight on me in complete blackness. And I had leveled off and I was floating as if I was in like a rocket, you know, like when they're in space and they're just floating around kind of thing. That's what I experienced. So I don't know if I was already in it or what. See, the reason I ask this because I see myself floating in and rolling out and floating in and rolling out, but I have a desire to push forward through it. What do the rest think? I get a sense like it's some, like it's like a portal, like a doorway mm -hmm. into something else. Well, I'm going to give way and see what. I'm going to wait on the father and we'll see what father says. <laughs> Y'all. And thanks, Karen, because I agree with you. But we'll wait. <laughs> I do too. I do too. I think it's that as well. What does Avril and Barbara think? I'm, I don't know. I'm not, um, I'm not saying too much. Um, my, my intellect's been working with all the discussion. <laughs> I've lost, I've lost the plot a bit. <laughs> <laughs> that happens sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I'm not seeing much either. So. I am feeling that I'm sort of in the Taurus, mm -hmm. but I'm coming out of it. I'm being pushed out of it. I can't feel that I'm going in. I feel like if I'm going in, I'm getting pushed out again. You know what I think I, or what I see? I feel like I'm going around in one of the, it's the Taurus. You know how when you see the Taurus, it's lines going all the way around. Yeah. And it, it's like circles that are joined yeah. in the middle by a ring. I feel like I'm in one of those circles and I keep going back in the middle and, and around. And out. I can, yeah, in yeah. and out, in and out, yeah. going around. That's what I feel like. Yeah, wow. that's the most thing I relate to. I relate to that. So I keep, I keep seeing myself coming out of it. I don't really see myself going around, but it's like a replay. I keep seeing myself come out, come out. Mm. So is it a Taurus or is it an a infinity? I don't know. Are they not the same? I don't know. I mean, the Taurus doesn't really have a beginning and an end, does it? It keeps going. So yeah, it's, yeah. In that aspect yeah. is infinity. So as y'all were talking about the Torah and and um and where we're at, I can see what the the light blue cross or the sea blue cross. But as I'm looking at it from this perspective of going back and forth, I'm quantumly entangled as I'm moving around where I'm at on this cross that's blue. I can see that the what would look like the horizontal part is spinning and spinning and spinning and the 
the vertical part is spinning and spinning and spinning. And as this one's moving, I'm over here and it's way off to the right. I'm quantitatively entangled over here, spinning and moving and spinning and moving. Have y'all ever seen some of them pictures when they show um, your spirit being awakened or quantumly entangled or what a what a man looks like when they live out of love, how their arms, when their arms are outstretched, it's like circles spinning and, and how the body as it's standing up is like circles spinning and you've got this big, huge circle kind of, but it's different parallels of it. That's what I'm seeing this cross doing as I'm over here entangled quantum. Wow. I've been dropping some pictures. One of them um, Jill shared earlier this week on the chat. Just if anyone just resonates with any of that, I'd be curious. Oh, yeah, I sent one too. That's when Mandy was talking. That's kind of like what I was seeing. Oh, wow. Yeah, I see it. Similar to the first one that you had sent, Jessica. Oh, it almost shows the direction of it. I've never seen one that shows the direction. Yeah, and I think Avril was saying that she kept feeling like she's being pulled to the middle. And that kind of like does that too. Mm So do we want to go deeper? Yeah. I think it's time. So how does everybody feel? Go I, deeper. I, Go ahead, Joe. I, I was just going to say, I, I feel, I now do feel a, um, a sense that we, we go deeper now into that, that place, whatever it is. <laughs> I, so when everybody else is ready is when I say we, we do it, if everybody's okay with it. Yes. We all yeah. Yeah. I'm yes. 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 Okay. You want to do that, Mandy? Just lead everybody in? So, um, I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And on the count of three, let's step in deeper through space time. into the abyss of, of the unknown with Father. One, two, three. Wow. As I went in, I seen the entanglement almost as in the heart air of his love and out of this area that I'm saying it's blue and red and yellow and green but it's all the colors circling up and around and out it's like the heart of wow I don't really know how to explain this
when we first stepped in, I felt I was aware of a vastness, such a huge vastness. But now I'm actually feeling like a tightness. Like um, even like a pressure on my heart physically or in my chest physically, like a squeezing. I don't know if that's possibly representational if you look at the diagrams of like being in a vastness and then coming up the center again and being tightened. That's, that's what I'm sensing. Yeah. It's sort of like that, like you said, in the Taurus, right? Did, did you look on our chat? Yeah. Like the infinity sign. And when we went in, uh, when Mandy put us in, I actually was in the center of that bright light. Like, I actually was like, oh, is that the Big Bang? Like, like the Big Bang theory? <laughs> it was like we all came together in that center in the Father's heart um, in oneness. And it was a big, uh, like a catechismic bang. It was a bunch of light. Um, and I just wondered if that's what, like, some were circling out and then coming back. And that's that constriction that you feel is coming back into that spot right there in that, in that light, the center of the last picture looks like an infinity sign i can say when we were going out it was almost as i went into the heart of the taurus and i went through it so the vastness of it going in i had seen almost as in the center of the light like you're showing on the infinity but it was red yellow blue i mean all these different colors circling around me and it pushed me through it to the other side so as I'm in this vast area, I'm going narrower and narrower and narrower. And in front of me, I can see this teeny tiny little like pinhole and I'm going and going and going. So I do feel the squeezing that, that Avril's talking about, but, I, but it comes through almost like the middle of the Torah, but I've seen every kind of color. I like that picture there, Jessica. Yeah. Wow. Now that reminds me of yes. an atom or an energy. Now, as we push through that, and that was the vastness. On the other side of this was the teeny, teeny, tiny hole that Avril says you get squeezed in. I'm looking at it and I open my eyes when Avril was talking like, oh. and it reminded me of the narrow way, almost like those to get through the eye of the needle. It yeah. was yeah. teeny, tiny. Okay, follow me here. I just, this might be where he's trying. So the thing, the picture that I sent last, I, I, I actually opened it up and it went to um, like what's right under it. It says it's the concept of fundamental indivisible particles goes back to the ancient Greeks. Uh, in the 20th century, physicists began exploring the goings on at the smallest levels of matter and among their most startling modern discoveries was the amount of different particles in the universe. So it just goes on to talk about quantum, but it was, it says that it's the standard model. And what stuck out to me was something from the very beginning, you said that you saw a cross and it was kind of light blue. Do you remember guys seeing that the, the particle that we have looks like the cross inside of us that's light? It's like the, I think it's called a bos bosom or bosom, something. Um, it's not a quirk, quirk. 
Is it the lanolin protein? Lanolin protein. There you go. And so that's what I thought of the very second that Jill opened us up and said, I saw this. It looks like a cross. And, and I, that was the first thing that came to my mind. Oh. I didn't say anything. And now we're getting further and further in. And so then I started reading and that picture that highlighted to you, Jill, this last one I shared, when I scroll down, it says the standard model of particle physics, which classifies elementary particles in several groups is at the core of modern physics. In this model, three of the four fundamental forces of physics are described along with the gauge bosons. And that stuck out to me, the particles that mediate those forces. And so I went to what gauge bosons are because they're one of the particles. And that's what stuck out to me. And it says that it has to do with the smallest particles in, of force. So it's, um, it's a bosonic elementary particle that mediates interactions among elementary fermions and thus acts as a force carrier can carry any force. I know this is like deeper stuff. I, I think that it's like we're um, all known gauge bosoms have a spin of one for comparison. The Higgs bosom is a spin of zero. So it's almost like we're, we're being brought down to this teeny, tiny, tiny, teeny particle level inside of him where there's power and force and vortex and we're experiencing what it does down to the tiniest fundamental elementary particle physics level that was really good yes like that, god you know, god that, particle you yeah know, like you know what i'm saying uh oh wow check this out you guys i'm gonna send this to you because i think mandy will relate to this one too because she said all the colors um check out this next picture which has to do with god particle wow Wow, what a joy ride the guard particle is. <laughs> yeah. I'm not getting any of your pictures that you're sending, Jessica. They all come through as just plain gray. Oh, no. Wow. And I had trouble getting back in when I tried to access them. I don't know what's going on. Barbara, check your battery level. I'm still feeling squeezed and I'm feeling incredible emotion, but I can't tell you what the emotion is. It's not good it's not bad it's not sad it's not happy it's just a foreign emotion and it's bringing tears to my eyes but i'm not they're not tears of laughter and they're not tears of sadness wow that's just emo just emotion force. and I, I think that's what that is it's what it force it was the talking about, yeah, it's, a, it's the very force, almost like force of nature, like the very um, propellant that accelerates these particles into becoming something. So yes, like we're yes, at the very yes, beginning yes. of something. That's why you can't explain it, because I think you as the creator have a right, have the, have the uh, ability to make it whatever you want. It's the force behind all of it. Does that it's make what sense? they call the chi. Yeah. Yeah, they could call it that. Yes. Yeah. The energy, energy particle. It's the energy and it can take on any form. Didn't somebody say that earlier? Mary, you were talking about that. Seems like Mary was talking about it being not this or not that. Oh, I can't remember. Yes, you're very faint. I, I don't know if it's just me or can you all not hear Jess so well? I, 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 I can't hear her. I can hear her, but not very well. Can you? Okay, Just I'm going to take off my headphone. Okay. Can you hear me now? No, it's like you need to get closer. It's just like I'm on top. There, of there, right there. Yeah. It's much better. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, good to know. Maybe there's something in my speaker. Um, did you hear me, Avril? I said, I just think that Mary was saying something about that earlier, that she was, um, it was like, it's not this and not that. There was a, there was like an openness to be whatever you wanted it to be. I almost sense the same thing now again, that emotion you're feeling is just like the beginning of where, how the, the force that's behind any emotion. Yeah. Yeah. Because isn't there emotion in creation? I mean, when you're creating. Oh, yes. And so, yeah. It's all kinds of emotions. Yeah. And I think, I think father has the same or similar. I feel the force in my body, like I would imagine when you thrust into space and you get that G force or whatever it's called on you. Yeah. That's what I'm experiencing on my body. That's how the squeezing and the pressure on my body. Yeah, like yeah. Mandy said her head went all the way back in her seat and she couldn't pull it up. Cindy's teaching us the power that's within just a tiny particle. that has the ability to be anything. It's so amazing, you guys, because I was listening to Joe Dispenza today and, and it was like he was talking about, and uh, Greg, Greg Braid and both were very short little videos, um, but it was, it was about um, the DNA being holographic, you know, about uh, and, and what holographic really means. But with, with Joe, it was about um, the, and, and what I shared with you guys the other day um, and what I shared with you today, Avril, it was like, when we, uh, when our thought, what we imagine it has with emotion in our brain, when it breaks that brain heart barrier goes down into our heart, which is the womb and it causes something to be created. He, uh, Mike talks about that, that it's the, everything in that, seed quote unquote of our imagination that thought whatever that desire everything whether it's a we're praying healing for someone whatever imagining seeing we're feeling the emotion as if it's already happened that in itself the essence of that has everything it needs to um to completely manifest by itself it's it's got it's like the god particle it's got everything contained within it to now, once it gets to our womb and to our spirit, now we can rest knowing that it's going to come forth because it has everything that it needs to do so. Yeah. Um, I feel like almost like the seed, a seed when it's got all the right conditions and it yes. just bursts through the shell of the husk of the seed and just creates like a little curl, you know, a foil of a plant or whatever. I'm, yeah. I'm feeling that energy, that pressure before it bursts. Yeah. I'm not sure what to I do. We saw a butterfly earlier, remember? It's like the coming out of the chrysalis too, right? Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To, to pop out, like the force that's in that very moment for it to come, to break out, you know? Isn't that moment called uh, like when it germinates? You know, that little spout. Uh, yeah, spout yeah. It's called the germ. Uh, I just heard um, iron. It's like a, an atom when you guys were talking about that. I, I was just researching what iron is. Mm -hmm. Positive and negative ions. Yeah, an atom or molecule with net electric charge due to loss or more electrons so it's like a charge positive and ele electrical charges interesting yeah seemed to me from what you're talking about that god might be teaching us what the basic elements of creation are 
so that we can begin yes. to create with him with understanding. And how yes. that life forces within us. Mm -hmm. And it's down to a, a tiny, tiny particle. I can't, I, I like know it in my spirit, but I, I can't tell you what it is because my intellect is not sorting it out. <laughs> But I feel like this tiny, tiny little bitty, and I can see even the God particle in front of me, but it's almost as if it's in me, and it's so bitty, bitty, tiny, but it just wants to, and it's getting, you know, more excited and more excited as it wants to just burst forth and just go poof right out, you know? It's like he's showing us all the power that's contained within the cell. It's like there's so much that it's, it, it wants to ignite. It's definitely creative power. Yeah. Um, what, um, what Greg was sharing was, was powerful because it was about the divine matrix and the hologram. It's the field of energy that they realize that it's entangled and it's holographic. Um, and that hologram means for every piece of something in that piece, the rest of the something is reflected. So he said, when you uh, take something that's a holographic image, a true hologram, and you take like a sledgehammer to it and you, you just bust it up, when you grab a tiny, you look under a microscope at each tiny particle of the hologram contains the whole. And it was really powerful because he brought that in that our DNA is holographic within our bodies. And the entire whole is contained within the one particle. And I feel like that's what God's talking about right now for me, for me personally. Um, and one of the messages was that we must become what we choose to experience in the world as well as in our body. The micro to the macro. Did any of that make sense or relate? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I have a question. So as we're experiencing this God particle and it feels like it wants to grow forth or explode, I wonder, could we take a hammer to it and bust it like the holographic thing to be able to share it with all those on the earth? I mean, because if we're in this area, shouldn't we be able, if we break the God particle that we're experiencing as the one man, shouldn't we be able to share it? Allow wow. all so everybody can get a piece of it? Yeah, well, couldn't we just release it? Since it's creative, we don't need to smash it. We could release right. it with a sparkler yeah. or a um, yeah, well, the that's true. fireworks. And yeah. then we could. I have a sense instead of a hammer that you just use a word. Because that's what God did. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. Really I was good. thinking of that. Yeah, I was. I was asking God what, what's, what this force is, is and how it creates, and I, I felt Him say through words, through words, as yeah. you speak it or that's breathe it. I feel like it's inside of me. Like you guys are inside of me, and yeah. pushing my rib cage, and I feel almost like being pregnant. You know, like there's no room that baby's just kicking and moving. <laughs> it's just jumping on your kidneys and you're and banging on your rib cage. That's what I feel like. And it's like a but instead of have to birth it out, I can just breathe it out. I want to share one more thing with you guys on all this because it's all relating. It, he said that an elevated emotion is a heart-centered emotion and a heart-centered emotion lacks polarity. Remember the whole uh, like floating that I was feeling? He says, this is the center of oneness and wholeness. And this is the union of opposites. This is our connection and bridge to the quantum field. It's where we connect. To feel a heart-centered emotion is you are falling in love with your life. So your body is unconscious mind and it does not know the difference between an experience that creates an emotion and an emotion that you're creating by thought alone. 
your body is believing it's living in that future reality in the present moment. That was just stuff on those two videos that I watched today that I was really meditating on. And I feel like it's really uh, key to what we're experiencing right now. That's so good. I can resonate with that. Guys. But that's, um, I feel like that's what he's trying to show us. I agree. Can you put that in the chat, Jessica? Excuse me? Can you put that in the chat? Yeah, I can share it. It's kind of long, you guys, but I mean, it's my notes from the, the two videos combined, but I'll share oh, it with the, you guys if you want Put the videos yeah. on. Put I the link the to the videos. Okay. Yeah. You want the notes or just the videos? The videos, because I'll sit and watch them. Okay. Avril, I've I can all... see the notes alone by yourself off on your messenger. Sure. Okay. You can do yeah. that too. Yes, because I have all the videos you guys put on, I eventually get to them all. I've got this entire right. list going. I know, right? So it's hard to keep up. <laughs> I am never bored because there's always something I've got. Yeah. Yeah. To edit. And it's like I've learned about new people that I've never heard about before. So yes, please share your videos. Cause it's just opening up a whole new world. I'm seeing the colors now that Mandy spoke about earlier. Are you still feeling the squeezing or is that past now? I'm still feeling it to some extent. Okay. Yeah, me too. And the colors are like, uh, like it's made out of light. feel I've got so much potential. I've got so much power. I just don't know where to direct it. I feel like I could explode. Sounds like what I was explaining before our call started. What, so if, we, what if we release that, created, that creativity to the earth? Well, Avril, since you feel like you're going to explode, do you feel like if God released, let there be light with a word, do you feel like you could release that so we could release the God particle or the light across the earth? And then Karen, since you felt it should be by the breath, you blow. I have, one, I have actually been blowing just spontaneously. I keep being up again. <sighs> to like release the pressure inside me. Yeah, you know, I see when you do that, it looks like, you know, when you blow on a um, dandelion and it's got the little, little um, white, little feathery type seeds. Yeah. And that's what I see when you're blowing, I see them floating out of you. I have a question. Should we all get together, maybe and release the God particle that, did we all see and then release it and blow? Do you feel like we should do it corporately? Yes. Yes. Yes, I do. Absolutely corporately. So does anybody want to lead us in it? I will. Okay. So I just thank you, Yeshua, for all that you've shown us, things that we've felt and seen and the colors and this creativity that is inside us and it's just bubbling up and pressure and so we just 
speak out life and light to the world all around that this creativity that is of yours that we can speak in life into all the land all the homes all the people so we release it with breath the breath of life and watch the seeds fly off the seeds of creativity the seeds of hope love and joy floating around I see it too as a seed of all things are possible. Potential. I see it as potential. Yeah. Yes. Potential. Yes. And every seed is potential and hope. I feel such renewed hope. Uh, hallelujah. So I just release that renewed hope to the earth. I release the freedom to create. I'm sorry, what? Sorry, Karen, keep going. In. No, so I just release that freedom to create, that freedom to, um, to express God's glory, that, that creativity to be in him, through him, and around him to be who he has created us to be. And I also feel like this creative light is also to restore even the heavenly boldness unto all creation. Amen. I see like the rings that were constricting people to be who God created them to be because they were stuck into a one way of thinking or one way of being i see that that um just starting to melt off and i can see like like people's arms are starting to be able like they're almost like ballooning out like they were like you know those little capsules the kids used to have and you put it in water and then the whole thing would just absorb the water and become this balloon thing and be like some kind of animal or something. Oh yeah. That's kind of like what I'm seeing is like people are like they were so constricted and it's like by whatever it is, I mean, I know today because of the holidays coming up, it's you know, demonic, but it's not just demonic, it's even religiosity and things that we thought was good and it and it wasn't it like it held us and it's like we couldn't accept anything anybody that ex you know um thought differently or anything and but now I, you know with these creative seeds it's like those rings are just melting off and people are expanding and it says if they're expanding it's like a whole new part of them that they didn't 
know or didn't remember or had put away so they could fit into the mold that they were in has come back and it's like they're just blossoming I see people as rosebuds opening up. It was funny um, when you were talking about the bands off of people, it was almost as if a creative miracle had been performed to a baby that didn't have limbs. Um, and as this was going out, um, it was almost as once it landed, the limbs were starting to grow the arms were starting to extend, the legs were starting to come out. That's so cool. Did y'all see what Jessica, the scripture Jessica posted in the chat? Jessica, you want to read it? Sure, I can. Uh, let me get over here to it. Uh, okay. Um, embrace the power of salvation's full deliverance like a helmet to protect your thoughts from lies and take the mighty razor sharp spirit sword of the spoken word of God. Pray passionately in the spirit as you constantly intercede with every form of prayer at all times. Pray the blessings of God upon all his believers and pray also that God's revelation would be released through me. This is Paul. Through me, every time I preach the wonderful mystery of the hope filled gospel. Yes, pray that I may preach the wonderful news of God's kingdom with bold freedom at every opportunity, even though I am chained as a prisoner, I am his ambassador. Just thinking well, of that day on the beach. Um, I took a walk on the beach earlier and I was just thinking of exactly that. Um, how Paul was chained up and in prison, but his freedom was so evident because his freedom was came from inside. I don't know if that relates, but when you read that scripture, I was reminded that I was thinking that this morning. Oh, that's so cool. That's a beautiful scripture, isn't it? I was thinking on today, uh, on Paul, how he was so bold, even though he knew Jesus after the resurrection, resurrected Jesus. He wasn't part of the 12, but he was in essence. And as the 12 got forth, you know, Paul had disagreements with Peter and them. But Paul said, but you don't know, we know, we don't know Jesus after the flesh anymore. We're supposed to know no man after the flesh. But what it was, was, is Paul was actually speaking something. Jesus, when Jesus walked, he taught the way of the difference of the, the new way of the father and how to look at father. And as Paul walked after Jesus was already resurrected, he was speaking into a, a new movement, a new understanding of the spirit, a new a new walk, I guess you could say, not to necessarily know him after the old Christ, but after the new. Kainos creation. You know, it's sort of interesting. I never really thought about it until just now. You guys probably saw it this way, but um, you know, the uh, the apostles needed a needed a balance. Like Paul, like you said, Paul knew Jesus after the resurrection. And they knew him before, and they needed Paul for that balance, you know, for, from his perspective. You yeah. follow me? Yeah. Yeah. I never thought about that until just now. Or even Luke. Um, he didn't walk with Jesus at all. He actually went and 
interviewed people. So his account are all collections of stories that he heard from other people about Jesus and about his life. Yeah, that you know, I I I didn't think about that either, but that's really a good point. Hmm. But it's interesting because like Paul experienced Jesus where Luke lived it through other people mm-hmm. and their stories. Wasn't that Mark too? Mark wasn't firsthand. He was hearing it through them. I always thought that Mark was the brother. Yeah, I thought he was part of it. but So he was part of it. I mean, he didn't have as close a relationship as Matthew because Matthew was the beloved. No, John, 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 the beloved. But the cool thing with Luke, too, is he was a physician. So like a lot of what he wrote was through that filter of being a doctor, a healer, physician, you know. Mm hmm. Kind of ties in with last week where we were reaching into the body of Christ with Thomas and and Columba, on the other hand, uh, releasing the power. It's interesting that he brought us down to a molecular particle level of everything is contained within that particle. And within our DNA. I ran across a a verse last night where I had never seen it before, but it said everything in all creation was in God. And I thought, wow, I saw that from a whole different perspective, that all of creation is represented in God, the creator. And so like when you talk about that holograph image and every single particle of it represents the whole I thought that gave me a whole new image of who God is. Yeah, and who we are. Yes. Can you guys talk about um, uh, you guys talk about concentric circles earlier, and then that just reminds me of you know the order of Melchizedek. The um, what well, Nancy Cohen was explaining i heard of her mentioning the concentric circles and you guys um what else did you guys talk about so uh the new creation the new creation man in christ so that ties into the concentric circles you guys um yeah talking about so now that reminds me of the uh, governmental sonship you know Mm -hmm. um um sons of uh yahweh mm-hmm. yeah priest king oracle and legislator i was talking to a friend uh used to intercede with her at the other church that i was at well, the scene within the church we've just split off anyway it was um she reached out to me i guess she's kind of been following me here and there on facebook and she reached out uh with, for something that i had posted and we ended up just making a facetime time and i found myself consistently saying that we have the fullness of the deity within us that we have everything for life and godliness that to 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 be partakers of his divine nature it's all inside of us we lack nothing it was like he wanted me to like pound that into her like It was like I said it over and over, just kept coming back around to that and coming back around to that. And that kind of reminds me of what we're talking about with this God particle. It's like the fullness of everything is already contained within us. 
you know, to be released. That force is right there. And I, it's almost as if he wanted us to, um, like Avril was explaining how much she senses it and feels it. Like she's mm -hmm. like, she's about to burst. It's like, he wants us to, to start experiencing his power. He wants us to be the demonstration of his power. It's, it's the, it's getting uh, apprehending that getting a hold of the truth of who we really are already. I can mm. still hear it, honey, the frequency and the sound of it. Jill, you remember when we first went in, you were talking about the cross and the sound of it. I can still hear it mm -hmm. like buzzing. Yes. And she was actually talking about a certain situation the lord keeps asking her to do stuff um like in the middle of the huge thing walk up on stage and lay hands on the pastor and she's like i can't do it like things that, like you know um but she said she could feel the power come on her and then when she didn't follow through with it she could feel when the power left her mm -hmm. she started to submit to man she went up to one pastor and asked him and he said well let's go ask another pastor and she said i missed it i could feel the power leave me and I, so I just, I just helped her to, you know, in, in the way of, well, your spirit, right. Your spirit first. So you can see it and do it in the spirit. You don't have to physically go up there. I mean, look at Catherine Coleman. She just pulled in the Holy spirit and people got pulled out of wheelchairs and fell all over the place, got healed and delivered. And, and she, her ego man was taken out of it. It was all eyes on God. Um, and so I just gave her that example, but we were talking about that. And so it's interesting that that's coming up now with that power again um the christ within us is the full container of all of all of it of the isness i-ness i amness you know where it's all yeah. contained within and it's not just inside of us he's teaching us tonight it's in every particle that's inside of us <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> that's a lot of power <laughs> yeah That's, it. That's right. Amen. So good. Guys, I don't want to miss anything, but my family's waiting on me to eat. So I got to, I got to jet. I love you guys. Love you, Josh. Thank right. you. Love you. Good night, guys. Night, night. I think we should wrap it up, Mandy. Yeah, I was just going to ask that. Does anybody have anything else? This has been really, really wonderful. Well, so I thank you, Father. And Jesus say, for the time that you shared with us and showed us and loved on us, for allowing us into the goodness of your love. And as we leave tonight, <laughs> wash us in your love and your presence and seal this ascension in the blood of Jesus. And I thank you. Amen. 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 Amen.